Hello and welcome to the SBH Teaching Kitchen's online cooking series. My name is Emily and in today's lesson we will be making our veggie stir fry. This is a really simple dish and the great thing about it is once you know what you're doing, you can really customize it to be whatever you want. This dish also is just the vegetables so it's really the starting point for creating an entire meal or you could just serve this as a side dish. If you wanted to serve this as an entire meal, you could serve it over some rice and then top it with your favorite protein, whether that be a fried egg or some seared chicken or shrimp or even tofu. You really have a lot of options here. Now for this dish, we just have a couple pretty simple ingredients. For our veggies, we are going to be using one bell pepper that we cut into thin strips. We have eight ounces or half a pound of green beans and we've trimmed the ends off of those. I've also gone ahead and cut in half any of those green beans that are pretty long. We also have one red onion that we julienned or cut into long thin strips. And then we have three carrots that I just cut into these thin rounds here. So really simple veggies. If you're missing one of them, you could always substitute with something else. That's the beauty of stir fries. You really have a lot of possibilities here. Now for our sauce that's going to go on the stir fry, again, pretty simple ingredients. We're going to use a quarter cup of reduced sodium soy sauce, one tablespoon of brown sugar, two teaspoons of cornstarch. That cornstarch helps to thicken our sauce. And then we have two cloves of garlic that we're going to mince and about one tablespoon of ginger that we're also going to finely mince. For our soy sauce, you do want to try to find the reduced sodium or less sodium soy sauce. Those are going to have a lot less sodium than the original kinds. It is important to remember that reduced sodium and low sodium do not mean the same thing. Reduced sodium legally means that that product only needs to have 25% less sodium than the original. So even though this is reduced sodium, it still has kind of a high amount of sodium, so we want to make sure we're not adding any extra salt to our dish. One nice thing about trying to find the reduced or less sodium soy sauce at the grocery store is that most brands um, label it with a green label. And this is pretty consistent across all of the brands. You can usually look for the green labeled soy sauce and that's going to be your reduced or less sodium soy sauce. You still always want to read the label just to make sure, but that's an easy way to look out for it. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and get started. We're going to start by making our sauce, and for that we need to mince our ginger and our garlic. We can do this with a zester, like I have right here, or you could use the small holes on a box grater. You could also do this by hand with a knife, but I like the zester because it makes it really, really small. We're going to start by peeling our ginger. Ginger is a root and it's usually sold in pieces that are much bigger than this, so I just cut off about a one inch slice. I recommend trying to find ginger that is pretty smooth. Sometimes it can have a lot of knobs and arms growing on it, and that can be pretty difficult to try to peel around. Once your ginger and garlic are both peeled, you're going to rest your zester on top of your bowl so you have something sturdy to hold onto, and you'll use that to mince your garlic. I like to leave the end on the garlic because it makes a nice handle. When you get to your ginger, it is a little more fibrous than the garlic is, so it can be a little trickier to use the zester on this, but it can be done. If your zester is on the dull side, this might be the time to switch over to, and use a knife. Once your ginger and garlic are done, we can add the rest of our ingredients. So we'll add a quarter cup of our reduced sodium soy sauce, one tablespoon of brown sugar, and two teaspoons of cornstarch. Once everything is in your bowl, you can use a spoon or a fork to mix everything together. You want to make sure that the cornstarch is fully dissolved in the sauce and that there are no lumps. Once everything is mixed together, you can set that to the side and we'll start stir frying our vegetables. Start by heating a large skillet over medium-high heat. 
You don't have to use a pan as big as I'm using. This is just the only thing I had that really fit all of my vegetables. Our recipe calls for two tablespoons of oil. I like to start with one tablespoon and see if that's enough. And if I feel like I need more oil later on, I can always add that extra one tablespoon. Allow that to get hot before adding your vegetables. A great way to test this is by adding just one small piece of your vegetable to your pan and see if it sizzles. Here you can see my onion is not sizzling, so I'll wait until it does that before I add the rest of my onions. After about 30 seconds, my onion is sizzling in the oil, so I can go ahead and add the rest of my onions. Give that a stir to make sure that everything is evenly coated in the oil, and we're going to cook our onions until they begin to soften. That's going to take about 3-5 to five minutes. As my onions were cooking, they did seem a little bit dry, so I did go ahead and add my last tablespoon of oil. Here we can see that the onions are soft, they're beginning to turn brown and translucent, so I'm going to go ahead and add my carrots. You always want to add the vegetables that take the longest time to cook first. So I always like to start with my onions, and then my carrots do take a long time to cook, so I'm going to add those second. We're going to allow these carrots to cook until they begin to brown and get pretty soft before we add our remaining vegetables. As you're cooking, you don't want to stir constantly. You just want to stir every 30 seconds to a minute or so. If you're stirring constantly, then your vegetables won't have time to brown at the bottom of your skillet, and that's really what we want because that brown color that our vegetables take on is going to add to the flavor of our final dish. Once your onions are soft and really brown and your carrots are also beginning to brown, you can go ahead and add your bell peppers. I do recommend cutting your bell peppers fairly thin because that's going to help them to cook faster. Give everything a stir and allow those bell peppers to cook for about one to two minutes. Once the bell peppers are beginning to turn soft, you can add your green beans. The green beans really don't take a lot of time to cook. They only need about one to two minutes, so we are going to add those at the very end. We do want our green beans to have a bit of a bite or a snap to them still, so once they turn a bright green color and are just barely getting soft, that is time to add our sauce. Now, I am using a really big skillet here, and what happens is liquid is going to evaporate very quickly. So if you're using a really large skillet like me, your sauce might thicken too quickly, and you may want to add a few tablespoons to a quarter cup of water just to make sure that everything gets coated evenly. After you add your sauce, you want to stir constantly to make sure that everything is evenly coated in the sauce, and that it thickens to your liking. I would recommend turning your heat off or to low for this step. As you can see, my sauce thickened really quickly. If you feel like you need to add a little more water to your pan, go ahead and do that. You can always cook it down a little bit longer to let that water evaporate out. And once we're done, we have our pan full of our delicious stir-fried vegetables. This makes about four cups, and your serving size is going to be one cup, so this does make four servings. And again, you can serve this as a side dish, or you could turn it into a complete meal by serving it with your favorite whole grain and topping with your favorite protein. Today, I'm just going to serve this as a side dish, and to make it a little pretty, I am going to garnish it with some sesame seeds. Thank you for joining us for the SBH Teaching Kitchen's online cooking series. This has been our recipe for vegetable stir-fry, and we'll see you again for the next one.